Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Vrijhoff. I'm responsible for strategy and business development for the ports cluster in Abu Dhabi ports. On behalf of myself and the complete Abu Dhabi ports family, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to our webinar discussion today with the topic industrialization in the UAE and the role of Abu Dhabi sports. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers today, but before we begin, I just would like to quickly go through some of our housekeeping notes. Thank you so much for sending in a number of questions for our um, uh, uh, for our panel that you have sent. Uh, and feel free to send additional questions in the chat box and the right button side of your screen. We will have uh, a Q&A session at the very end, and we'll try to address those questions that you have for our panel during that session. Our agenda today will feature a keynote address discussing in the UAE's industrial strategy driving towards economic diversification from His Excellency Jamal Al Jarwan, the Secretary General uh, of the UAEC. Also, updates from Abu Dhabi ports uh, from my colleagues in the ports cluster, as well as an Abu Dhabi uh, view of distinguished speakers of companies Emirates Steel, ADQ, and Taziz. Before I pass over to our speakers, we will play a short video as an overview to our session. We're investing heavily in our ports, supporting the nation's transformation into a global industrial hub. Mulharic Port in Naldafra region is strategically located close to major oil and gas projects. Significant enhancements have been made across the port to meet the current and future needs of the region's oil and gas and downstream chemical sector. Similar progress has been made at Silla Port to improve facilities for oil and gas, light cargo operations, and the local community. Fujara Terminals is the only multi-purpose facility on the eastern seaboard, just 70 nautical miles from the Strait of Hormuz, with easy access to the Indian subcontinent, the Red Sea, East Africa, and beyond. We have invested in modern infrastructure and superstructure to cater to a wide range of industries, creating new trading opportunities for UAE and foreign investors. Our flagship multi-purpose port, Khalifa Port, continues to diversify its offering through increased general cargo handling, through the development of South Key and Khalifa Port logistics, improved connectivity via our terminals and our new feeder service, providing investment opportunities and facilitating trade. Abu Dhabi Ports is increasing capabilities and expanding capacity transforming the Emirates into a regional and global hub for commerce and industry and supporting our customers. That's a nice little introduction to today's proceedings, I think. But without further, it's my pleasure to introduce Saif al Mazrui, head of the ports cluster at the Abu Dhabi ports. Mr. Saif al Mazrui is the head of the ports cluster uh, the owner and operator of 11 commercial ports across the UAE and in Guinea Kamsar. He's responsible for spearheading all port functions and operations, including organization, strategy, commercial, and operations. Over to you, Saif. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for attending our second port webinar. Uh, Abu Dhabi ports uh, greatly appreciate this opportunity to be able to speak to not only our existing customers and partners, but also our future ones. And we are honored to be joined by His Excellency Jamal Al Jarwan, Secretary General of the United Arab Emirates International Investors Council, who will shortly provide his insight on the UAE industrial strategy uh, driving economic diversification. Um, following a challenging 2020, a year that was greatly disrupted by COVID-19, many nations and economies around the world have struggled to cope with its impact. Thanks to our robust business continuity strategy, 
alongside a steadfast commitment to advancing enhanced infrastructure and services capability, uh, Abu Dhabi Port has prevailed through our long-term di digitalization strategy led by Magda Gateway and inspired by the fourth industrial rev revolution, we have continued to invest heavily in digital and smart technology, a commitment that has proven critical in bolstering our re reliance over the past 15 months and we uh, and is the key to our growth as well. Uh, although we did not expect this pandemic, our uh, agility and transformation journey to date has ensured we are prepared to successful handling the worst of its effects so far. Alhamdulillah. Working with the leadership of United Arab Emirates and relevant authorities, Abu Dhabi Ports has played a key role in supporting the national strategy to provide access to safe, effective vaccine and the wider efforts to combat COVID-19. Uh, and as a, a founding partner of the HOPE Consortium, the Abu Dhabi-led public-private partnership to deliver large quantities of COVID-19 vaccine globally, we have leveraged our facilities, experience, and the advanced technology provided by Magda Gateway our digital uh, arm to support the global humanitarian mission. Um, in the wake of this crisis, we have also done our part to drive national and international economy recovery. Under the theme of industrialization in the United Arab Emirates and the role of Abu Dhabi ports, today's webinar will not only highlight the latest projects across our ports, but will also focus on how we are supporting the nation's transformation into global industrial hub. Over the past few years, Abu Dhabi Port has invested heavily in diversifying and evolving its ports portfolio. During that time, we have secured several key acquisitions and partnership and have invested in the expansion of our port infrastructure by signing a long-term agreement with Abu Dhabi Terminals to handle our first container terminal in Khalifa port, a striking key strategic partnership with Costco, MSC, and Auto Terminal uh, Barcelona, uh, expanding infrastructure assets at Khalifa port and Mugharrak ports and Fujera terminals, uh, broadening our catalog of value-added uh, services, creating also a strong proposition for new customers such as Arabian chemical uh, terminals and national feed. Uh, not to, to mention also that we have also an increasing our network in addition to driving increased volume of trade. We have committed ourselves to an extensive development pipeline that offer great potential to many of the United Arab Emirates growing industries segments. In Fujera, we have completed our uh, extensive expansion of Fujera Terminal, which will support further growth between the United Arab Emirates and Africa in the strategic location. Whilst in Abdapra region, we have dedicated several resources uh, to support the energy sector. Uh, with similar plans supporting the energy field at Khalifa port also underway. As a result, we have already witness witnessing a surge of interest in a strategic partnership from global players. We are also experiencing a marked increase in both our services capabilities as well as our year-on-year -year growth. Despite the progress, however, there is still much more we can do. Our de determination to forge ahead and discover new opportunities to support our beloved nation and realize the vision of our leadership have resulted in a great success so far. As the facilitator of trade and logistics in, the, uh, in, in Abu Dhabi, we will continue this journey by enhancing our port capabilities and transforming the Emirates into a regional 
on the global hub for commerce and industry. Thank you. And now it is my great personal privilege to introduce our distinguished guest, His Excellency Jamal Al Jarwan. Thank you very much, Your Excellency uh, Saif al -Bazrui. Thank you, Paul, for hosting me today. It's a pleasure and it's an honor uh, to take part in such a uh, distinguished event. Uh, we have very strong association with Abu Dhabi Ports. Shorter, I will be displaying in my presentation uh, how the Council, the UAE International Investor Council, is playing a role today in promoting uh, UAE companies abroad. Uh, without any further ado, uh, I'll move directly to my uh, few slides presentation I prepared for this event to first introduce what UAE IIC is all about. Our mission is mainly uh, meant to protect UAE international investors uh, through effective coordinations among the international investors. Today, UAE IIC uh, happily and, and proudly, I can say, that having uh, nine most important investors from the UAE listed abroad. And it's uh, well connected to the Abu Dhabi ports where His Excellency Saif al mazrui also sits on the board uh, advocating international investments and the role of UAE companies that they can play in building infrastructures and operating abroad. Our vision as UAE IIC, we are strong link between the UAE investors and the government bodies, be it in the UAE or abroad. We hold five core values, transparencies, governance, team spirit, participation, and effective communications. Next slide, I'll be talking about, if we can move to the next slide. Uh, UAE, Paul, have succeeded in the last 50 years to diversify its economy. We're probably that today we can say that UAE economy has merged as one of the strongest in the regions due to the policies and, and legislation that we have adopted throughout the 50 years in diversifying our resources, not only depending on oil and gas, but rather in exporting capitals, attracting foreign capitals to the UAE, and Focusing more on one of the topics that today you are talking about is about industrialization, which UAE has played a greater role in positioning as, as a hub and as a host of many, many foreign companies that who are today happily operating from the UAE land. So UAE, and in, in the light of diversification policy that we have adopted, we have succeeded to build the portfolios today that is operating internationally of assets that's exceeding a trillion dollar that I'm going to show momentarily where we operate today as UAE international investors. The next slide, please, I will be, uh, who sits on the board, who chair UAE IIC, gladly and honored government of UAE has supported UAE international investors by dedicating Minister of Economy to chair the UAE IIC. He's the chairman of the board. Uh, UAE IIC has been operating for the last seven years. Minister of Economy has always been the chair of the board. The next slide I will be showing who are also members and gladly uh, his Excellency Dr. Thani Ziyudi was the Minister of the State of Foreign Trade and is also sitting on the board supporting UAE investors. And obviously, His Excellency Saif uh, Mohammed Khalfan al Mazrui 
who's joining us today, who's hosting us as well, is sit in the board as an active participant in formulating foreign investment policy for the UAE. We have blue chip companies as well. Start with Buruj, Ittisalat, Dubai Holding, Dubai Investment, and none standing not to mention Mubadalez, the founder of UAE, one of the founder of the UAE IIC, Majid al Futaim, Civil Aviation, Sharaf Group, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Ministry of Finance. Quite mixed, then high profile individuals. And an honor to have His Excellency Saif Al Mizrui representing Abu Dhabi Ports because of its mission and vision, an organization that's looking to expand internationally. We are here to support and we're being privileged with this association of a port, an institution so ambitious and courageous at the same time, looking not only operate excellence in their operation logistically and promoting trade and investment abroad, and as well investing up. The next slide, uh, what's the objective? The council is basically, we're acting a strong link between the council members, the UAE government establishments, and uh, not only locally, but we also have a strong relationship with foreign administrations. We're providing platforms, supporting, protecting, promoting, and expanding the interest and the objective of the UAE international business. This is fundamental and core of our operations. We are working like partners with our international investors, representing UAE flagship companies abroad. And we strongly believe Abu Dhabi ports is playing and will be playing a greater role, not only regionally, but internationally. Uh, next slide, they'll be moving fast in the next five minutes uh, to stick to the timing. I'll skip this uh, slide for the sake of timing. It's basically I've covered in my previous notes. So next slide, slides. This is uh, very important when it comes to the industrial sector, which is the core topic of today's event. The UAE industrial sector has achieved remarkable growth over the past years. And it has been driving force for development of the national economy. Thanks to the Abu Dhabi positives playing greater part in building these capabilities. And we are in full support of their operation and their motors to operate and support the industrial uh, revolution and the evolution in the UAE. Uh, no doubt the industrial sector has contributed uh, 8.4 percent to the UAE GDP in an oil. And industrial exports is, has really scored a 240 billion UAE dirhams. And the number of industrial companies operating in the countries is shockingly amazing and impressive, but we are also ambitious to move on the higher scale. 33,000 companies operating in UAE today, employing 737,000 employees, and total spending on R&D is 1.3 of UAE GDP. It's a huge operations, and its impact on the UAE economy is tremendous. The next slide, I'll be also continuously uh, talking about what are the ambitions? UAE government is strongly believing in launching a higher scale industrial hub in the region, moving from 133 billion to 300 uh, billion dirham uh, uh, launching operation, which is known and the latest launch by the Ministry of Industrial and, and, and Advanced Technology, the, three, the launch of Operation 300 billion. This is the UAE national strategy for the industry and 
and in the advanced technology. The strategic objective, creating the relevant, attractive, and engaged business environment to meet local, international investors' need as well. And this is where Abu Dhabi Ports fits in exactly in supporting this mission and vision. Supporting the continued growth of homegrown national industries and enhancing their competitiveness. Today, Abu Dhabi Ports is appealing to many international investors to partner with and help in achieving the goal that's set by the government of UAE. We are aiming to boost the UAE reputation as a global destination for leading future industries with world-class infrastructure. An infrastructure that Abu Dhabi Port has really done extremely well since its inception in 2006 and has done excellent in building infrastructure today that is so appealing to the international investor community. Next slide. Uh, we will achieve our goals through advanced technology adoption approach with focus on priority industrial sector. These are the sector that we will be more focusing on. Electrical machineries and equipment defense industries build on maximize our current competitive advantage, heavy industry, steel and aluminum and chemicals. Next slide. In, Slide number 10 uh, shows the focus on the vital sector and developing new competitive advantage for future industries, agriculture technology, manufacturing medical devices, pharmaceutical product, hydrogen, space, and, and, and the list goes on. Very specific strategy drawn from a very highly expert focused group to come up with a very focused and concentrated strategy. And next slide. The Ministry of uh, Industry and, and uh, Advanced Technology will focus on now 11 vital industrial sectors. They're listed here, food and I probably covered it in the previous slide, food, beverage and agriculture technology, pharmaceutical, electrical equipment, advanced manufacturing, heavy industry, petrochemicals, rubber and plastic, machinery and equipment, hydrogen, medical technology space. Focusing on these 11, just to be focused on the next phase uh, for the UAE. Uh, next slide. Uh, the new strategy will transform UAE into a global hub for advanced technology and 14 all solutions. Uh, UAE has been in the, uh, had created the Ministry of Industrial and Advanced Technology two years ago in a full span and uh, working uh, very strongly with various constituencies in the UAE, among which Abu Dhabi Port is one of the most important partner to work with in realizing the strategy and executing the strategy. Next slide. Made in Emirates will raise uh, awareness of national product, enhance their competitiveness when exported to the global markets. Objective is to promote the domestic consumption and export of quality local products. The impact would be to contribute to UAE soft power agenda, improve the quality of local product and increase investment in quality infrastructure, increase exports of locally manufactured goods and reduce dependency on imports, enhance local manufacturing value add and investments. Next slide, please. This map shows today, and this is exactly fits in within the strategy of UAE, where Abu Dhabi Port as well focus on exporting its excellence and know-how in managing ports and investing in infrastructure abroad. 
today UAE is proudly, we can say, operate its investment in the dark green area, covering majority of the world. And the journey still has not ended. You are in the middle of the journey. And Abu Dhabi port is well positioned today to export its excellence in management and infrastructure investments in the globe. Today, our assets cool. values at a trillion and a half dollar. The valuation of our assets abroad, being it financial or be it an infrastructure. One of the heaviest in the top three global investor today, UAE is proudly, strongly positioned as a leading investor, not only regionally, but international. And Abu Dhabi ports is as well executing a strategy of expansion internationally that we as UAE IIC in full support of their mission and their execution capabilities. We strongly believe Abu Dhabi port has what it takes to export its excellence in management and capital investment abroad. The next slide. I'll be showing one of the most important and at the same time valuable sovereign wealth fund that today sits on the top of the list globally, Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, Mubadala, Investment Corporation of Dubai, Abu Dhabi Holding, value of its assets exceed a trillion dollar abroad. In line of our reputation in the UAE, who have exported capital, managed assets, and managed financial resources abroad, exceeding a trillion dollar, I think, and wholeheartedly believe Abu Dhabi ports is as well in line with this country or nation investment policy abroad. Next slide, please. We are glad today as a council and gladly and proudly we can announce we are in full support of Abu Dhabi Port and its mission and vision of what has built since 2006 a capable port authority, a capable port regulator and exporting its capabilities and its impact in the UAE investment climate had contributed extremely well and its vision to be to contribute to the Abu Dhabi GDP exceed 15% by 2030, a diversified economy for the Emirates of Abu Dhabi. Not only oil and gas, but I think Abu Dhabi ports playing vital role, not only in Abu Dhabi fiscal policy, but a UAE fiscal policy. With this, I would like to end my contribution of this afternoon event that I'm gladly and proudly taking part of it and I would like to thank the Port Authority of Abu Dhabi for their invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Your uh, Excellency, for a very insightful update on the industrialization strategy uh, in the UAE. Eh? 300 billion uh, dirham is, is for our foreign visitors, that's 75 billion of um, uh, dollar of, um, of, of investments. Um, your Excellency, I have one question for you. I really appreciate that you're being with us. Um, we have quite a big representation of, of the international shipping, maritime and logistical industry. Could you elaborate also a little bit on how they can contribute to this, uh, to this agenda? Without doubt, the value chain today of, uh, of the port uh, address main uh, four main pillars, I say, is start with manufacturing, logistic, trade, and distribution, which without, we will not be able to work. Today, the, the logistic and the transportation infrastructure, all-inclusive, plays a greater role in free trade and fast moving of product across countries, 
So they are playing a vital role in, in building these capabilities. And I think Abu Dhabi Port has managed extremely well to partner with world class logistic companies. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I appreciate you have to leave for another engagement. It's a busy time, and we are absolutely delighted you were here with us today. Thank you very much. Paul, thank you. This is my, it's my pleasure. This is one of the best events I've attended uh, recently. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Um, we're moving on with the program. In the meantime, I would like to ask the attendants to um, to uh, to ask questions in the chat box on the right bottom side. Some of them have come in. Please join and uh, and take the opportunity to address your questions. We're moving on now and we're ac accelerating a little bit with our Abu Dhabi Ports team. I have three colleagues here with me: uh, Abdulaziz Al Balushi, the CEO of Fujera Terminals; Mubarak Al Mazrui, Port Director of the Al Dafa region; and Kim Larson. VP of Commercial and Business Development, who will provide an update on some of our key growth projects in the ports. Abdulaziz, over to you. Thank you, Paul. Um, thank you, Your Excellency, our guest. It was really insightful uh, to hear uh, the UAE footprint in the global map and uh, the contribution that uh, the port industrially and specifically Abu Dhabi ports and, and into the UAE market. Your honored guest, good afternoon. It's my pleasure, it's my privilege today to be here to share some of our latest development and our vision for the future of our multi-purpose facility for Jira terminals. Since taking over the operation of container, general cargo, Roro and cruise business at Fujera port in 2017, we have actively explored the new opportunities to develop infrastructure and elevate Fujera terminals into a state-of-the-art facility. Strategically located on the country northern coast, roughly 70 nautical miles from the Strait of Hormuz, Fujera terminals operate as the only multi-purpose facility on the eastern seaboard today. Our easy access to east-west trading routes and directly linked to the India subcontinent the Red Sea and East Africa means we are providing our customers with a competitive offering that is cost efficient, has fast and turnaround and reduced risk. Building on this strength, we have continued to expand the capabilities of our terminal with several infrastructure enhancement. We have deepened the terminal draft to 15 meters to cater for a larger vessel, which showed a lot of interest from the traders increase container capacity to handle up to 720,000 TU, expand our total area to 300,000 square meters. We have created a new gate complex and other site facility with expectation to have 15 minute truck turnaround, which is in the interest of the traders as well, and extended our key wall from 760 to 1,000 meter with four berths, which now able us to handle 1.3 million tons of general cargo and increase Roro and cruise services. The past years has also seen the start of groundwork that will link Fujera Terminal to the upcoming Etihad Rail project. Once completed in 2023, the rail terminal will connect our facility and Fujera port to a GCC railway network spanning 1,200 kilometers with a link to several of the region major trading hubs. Beyond infrastructure de uh, development and enhancement, we have also worked hardly to strengthen our unique offering by creating a wealth of a new trading opportunities for both UAE and foreign investors, in particular in relation to steel and transshipment. As a part of our directive to drive the economic development of Fujera and the UAE, we have introduced several incentives encouraging prospective industries and traders to take advantage of our strategic location and low operating cost. The success of the initiative was well received by many traders over the course of 2020 and 2021. Our innovation infrastructure improvement and strategic initiatives has helped accelerate Fujira Terminal transformation into a global facilitator of the trade and logistics. Over the coming years, we will continue to bluster our unique offering to make us more competitive in the market and also 
to enable us to cater to a wider range of industries. In a closing note, I would like to thank you all and to take this opportunity to invite you to join our journey to cement Fujairah position as a key contributor to the UAE efforts to create diversify and sustainable economy powered by innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abdelaziz, for your update. And uh, we're now moving from uh, from Fujera to the western region of uh, the UAE. Over to Mubarak Al Masrui, board director of the Al Dafra region. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to talk about the first exceeding with a warm welcome to everyone joining us today. I will provide an update for uh, Al Dafra region and what is uh, the development we made in Al Dafra region. And practically, we uh, develop uh, two important ports in Al Dafra region, which is Al Dafra, uh, which is the Magharak port and the Sel port. And with the strategic uh, vision for the area and uh, for the needs of the Al Dafra region and for uh, the Abu Dhabi and UAE to invest on in all this area. We determine to invest all uh, internationally and globally in the region, which is in Al Dafra region. As Al Dafra region has long served the cornerstone of Abu Dhabi, long-term investment strategy, which align with the vision of Abu Dhabi, government for development that diversified and set sustainability of economy. In recent three years, we have focused on enhancement the, cap uh, the capability of our port to support our nation industrialization strategy. In particular, this is the highlighted through our ongoing development of Mugharrak port, which uh, thanks it uh, to uh, the location to major oil and gas project hold the great strategy value for the UAE oil and gas sector. Since 2017, we have invested scientific resource toward the expanding of the capability of the port to handle offshore and mega, uh, mega project related to oil and gas field. These enhancement include expansion of the key wall to be 400 meter. Additional uh, Roro Ram, development of a key wall and heavy lift for uh, the key wall. It will handle also uh, 15 uh, ton square, uh, 15 ton uh, per square meter. Also, we increase a lot of uh, the apron area to be loaded for the heavy lift. And also our draft in the Magharrak port, it will be uh, eight meter. And we can serve a lot of vessel, locally and international vessel. And also we can serve the oil and gas sector in that area. Also with the pipeline and with the project, which we have it with the ADNOC, the, the 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 main uh, the main customer for uh, the Afra region, it's uh, to facilitate Hail and Gasha project and handle cargo for oil and gas sector, as well as a new infrastructure in the form of liquid and the dry uh, bulk pipeline. The newest port enhancement position Mukarrak port as the ideal maritime facility to meet the current and future need for this region oil and gas and downstream chemicals uh, sector approximately of our waste and hail and gasha and then other upstream of oil and gas which has also the cemented our role in an uh, isps port capable to serving international as i mentioned before similar process also has been made over a cell port which is currently under construction and the refreshment and moderation project develop it can capability a better cutter to light general cargo operation as part of the expansion project the port will will receive 
a new commercial 300 meter key wall. The total will be 600 uh, meter key wall and the draft for the cell port also 8 meter draft. And we will have Roro RAM, a new modern design slipway to be built. A uh, cell port will be like a design and modern for two purposes for local community and for the operation. And we will have also in that area in cell port fish market. Uh, admin building, uh, pontoons for uh, for ledger uh, boat, and also we will have a key wall for those for 100 meter. Both uh, Mugharrak port and Sil port will handle for a Dhafra region in the east side of uh, United Arab Emirates, and it will give us a good opportunity to have a business and to have to deal with the neighbors' country to access from the east side of uh, UAE. We are now positioning to meet the increasing the capacity need of the customer across a range of industrial area. Industrial area. This includes the customer in the region, oil and gas sector, and the new opportunity in the international, as well as supporting the local fish industry and maritime for generation to come. Thank you for your joining and listening to my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Mubarak, about a very exciting opportunity in the, in the Western region, uh, where a, a large part of the investment uh, that uh, is actually sp she spoke about is actually going to happen. It is now my pleasure to, uh, to introduce Kim Larsen, RV of Commercial and Business Development, who's going to give an update of the latest developments in Khalifa Port. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much to all the panelists and uh, His Excellency, and uh, especially to you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sitting in and listening in to uh, to the presentations that you've seen today. We're going to try and make it as dynamic as possible because obviously we're giving you a selection of ports of uh, of the developments, but clearly across the whole portfolio of the ports in Abu Dhabi, there is a lot of development going on to actually support the industries in the UAE. In the very beginning, I just want to highlight for Khalifa Port that obviously since we had the first webinar, uh, more activities are actually taking place. And it's a, it's a great pleasure to mention that we had last time talked about the South Key, which is our development of three kilometer key wall with 18 and a half meter depth alongside. And then we also have the Khalifa Port Logistics, which is a mix between lower draft eight meters and uh, 16 meter draft that is under development. Now the South Key is actually already taken into, can you call it soft operations? So all importers and exporters within general cargo, bulk and other segments can actually already make use and are already making use of the port as we speak today. So it's it's great news that things are progressing exactly as for the timeline and uh, and it's a good offering to, to all the clients that are interested also coming in. So there is plenty of opportunities for everybody. Also, when it comes to Khalifa port uh, logistics, then we are basically talking about that the first phase has been completed, which is what you see here, uh, let's say also in the pictures in the front where where we are talking about that the first phase of eight meter draft is also available and is also available for a number of the industries. Now, where we are also progressing is uh, on the 16 meter, which uh, will be completed a, a little bit later, but we actually expect that first sections of the 16 meter uh, uh, key wall will also be made available. But the, the most important message is essentially that all the marine works uh, have practically been done for a number of these developments. We are doing the top side work at this moment in time. So also for the interested parties who wants to come and have a look, you can see that it is a massive uh, undertaking that is that is going on, but we are really progressing very, very well, ready for customers to come in. The other good news uh, to share today is essentially that we have already started the marine works for the uh, Etihad rail uh, terminal that will be located just behind the container terminals. You can just see them on the picture that we are showing on the screen here today. So essentially, this is progressing in full speed. And uh, as my colleague Abdul Aziz was mentioning before, the connectivity to Fujera, that same connectivity we will also have out of Khalifa port directly into the port itself. So this thing about connectivity for uh, the ports uh, in the UAE, and in particular here when we are mentioning Khalifa port and Fujera, will be directly linking, let's say, the, uh, the terminals and uh, the port operation itself. So inside the port, you will actually have the rail access. Mm -hmm. So this thing about uh, modalities uh, and, uh, and multi-modalities, in, in fact, is going to be uh, incredibly important for us. And also important to mention that during the course of this year, and since the last time we gave you an update, 
there has actually been further enhancements also to the marine connectivity by having a number of new mainliner services calling in our ports uh, in our two hypermodern terminals, but certainly also from uh, the feeder service that we launched in July last year. Now, getting a little bit back to the main reason also for today, not only giving about an update on what we are building, essentially it is also about getting uh, the right partners in to make sure that we can support the industrialization for the future. So there's no doubt the strategic focus for us also going forward is that not only about being an enabler of trade, but we certainly also want to be a facilitator of industry. So this is a lot about the topics uh, that we're talking about today and clearly with UAE's leadership to foster this uh, enormous uh, investment of 300 billion going in to uh, a sustainable national economy, but diversified from oil and gas. This is the way we go forward. So one of the first steps is, of course, that we have made the agreement with uh, Arabian Chemical Terminals, a 50 year agreement, where we have just had, as you can see in the picture here, the groundbreaking ceremony, which essentially is the first uh, greenfield commercial uh, uh, liquid bulk uh, facility, which, of course, will, will offer, let's say, a lot of opportunities and cost savings also for a number of customers and industrial players coming in, especially when it comes to the outsourcing of uh, their liquids and, uh, and gas, uh, let's say, expenditures. When we also talk about further, uh, let's say, uh, developments, you have seen in the in the press recently that actually uh, one of the region's first green ammonia plants uh, with zero carbon emissions will actually be located in the industrial zone just behind uh, uh, Khalifa Port, which is a key zap. So in this way, we can also say as a port, we are clearly making ourselves very much ready to fully support this integrated solutions to facilitate this hydrogen and ammonia uh, value chain both when it comes to the, the need in the region, but certainly also to play a role in the global scene. On top of it, a little bit moving away from the liquids, uh, we are also talking about here uh, port side handling, food security for the UAE, which of course over the past couple of years and ever since the outbreak of COVID has been very much on the agenda for everybody else. So we also had our 50 year agreement with Anchorage Investments that are actually building 300,000 tons, uh, metric tons capacity to handle basically key food and animal food ingredients as well. So it's just to, to mention some of these very, very important investments taking place that really will make an impact on our economy. And obviously we hope there will be a lot more interest by mentioning this to a lot of the listeners on this call as well. We are very welcoming anybody who has an interest also for any of the industries that we have not mentioned so far. So what do we have that can accelerate it? Obviously you have two high performing container terminals available as, as it is today. We have opening uh, basically brand new and uh, expansive uh, corporate, uh, let's say operation ready to handle much more general cargo bulk uh, facilities. We have just had the groundbreaking for the liquid uh, chemicals uh, tank farm. And essentially alongside of this, of course, you have the food security that is being up with the with the with the silos and uh, and the food processing uh, units. But clearly we're also, uh, you know, moving ahead with a number of other industries. So it's basically just to make sure that you get the flavor that there is full speed and all the investments going forward. We are well positioned to address your needs, not only in Khalifa port, but certainly in all the ports that uh, we manage today. And we welcome, you know, your interest and uh, and uh, we are ready to uh, to talk. We are open for business. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abdelaziz, Mubarak and Kim. It's certainly an exciting time within the ports cluster. Uh, we're moving in a slightly different gear now. We are delighted to be welcoming three guest speakers to share their industry uh, insights. We'll begin with uh, engineer Said Kalfan al Ghafri, the chief supply chain and planning officer of Emirates Steel. Uh, in his role, he's responsible for managing the company's procurement, as well as inbound, outbound logistics and warehouse management. Good afternoon, Said. We're, uh, we're delighted to have you uh, with us here today. Um, I think uh, uh, His Excellency already pointed out uh, the steel as a, as a key sector in this uh, $300 billion uh, expansion uh, program. Can you um, enlighten the audience here today a little bit about ESI steel plans to, uh, to cater for that growth? Yeah, no, no. Thank you, Paul, for this opportunity. I'd like to thank you and thank our colleagues in uh, Abu Dhabi ports uh, for allowing me to speak in this very interesting uh, event. And I'm very grateful to be among you and the audience uh, to speak about Emirates Steel. Uh, I'll talk about the growth of Emirates Steel, but if you allow me, I'm gonna walk you few, uh, through a few slides and then we can basically talk about that, if that's okay. Yeah, so uh, who's Emirates Steel? Emirates Steel is part of the ADQ portfolio companies. 
we are basically uh, capturing 60% of the domestic market for steel. And we export to over 40 countries uh, in the world, including the Americas, Asia, Middle East, North and Africa. We are the only fully integrated plant uh, producer in the UAE. We, we manufacture close to 3.5 million ton of steel, and we have close to 2,500 employees, including contractors and direct contact with 50 nationalities. Uh, can I ask you to go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so what sets Image Steel different than uh, the other players regionally? So Image Steel clearly is a clear regional champion. We are basically uh, utilizing a world-class equipment and operations to manufacture steel according to the best standards in the world. So we've got standards in the UAE, we've got standards in Europe, we've got standards in the, in the USA, and we've got assets that are less than 15 years old. With that, we are using the best in class operational and business uh, procedures. Within the region, Emirates Steel is considered to be the first steel producer in the, in, the, in the GCC. Our brand name is very much reputable. We are among uh, the people who set the prices in the GCC. And from when we did the benchmark recently, we became among the 30% global cost curve. So this basically sets us aside from most of the regional uh, players in the, in the GCC. When it comes to contributing to the UAE uh, and Abu Dhabi specifically, uh, today we are basically contributing close to 11% uh, to the Abu Dhabi manufacturing activity. And we are empl employing close to 26% uh, percent, uh, of the 2,500, which are Emiratis. Uh, last but not least, Emirates Steel's focus is always health and safety. And uh, we basically benchmark according to the best in the world. And we used uh, an index called LTI. LTI measures the safety culture uh, of a company, and it's published by a very reputable association called World Steel Association. And if you look at the benchmark, it's 0.83, and we are at 0.31. So this sets it apart from most of the uh, steel manufacturers when it comes to health and safety. And this has been catalyzed by, uh, by receiving an award in 2020 for excellence in uh, health and safety by the same uh, association. So uh, uh, with that, I'm going to just move into the next slide. Next slide is basically our journey with Abu Dhabi ports. Our journey goes back uh, to 1998. We've been working very closely with our colleagues in, uh, in Abu Dhabi ports, different, different, uh, different sectors. And as you can see, the left hand side of uh, the slide talks about inbound. And then the right hand is outbound. When it comes to the inbound, recently we have signed a very interesting uh, contract, which I will talk about in the next slide. This basically handles our raw material. Uh, so, uh, okay, no, I can't talk about it now. So this is basically the, 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 the contract that we have signed with Abu Dhabi Ports uh, under a company called Safin. It's one of their companies. Safin now will manage Emirates Steel uh, volumes of uh, around 5 million ton per year. This is a very strategic project, and I believe that uh, without it, Emirates Steel cannot function. So it's very strategic, and I hope that this will be the gate for Safin to uh, penetrate into the market, uh, because such solution is quite interesting for factories which, which basically uh, reside under a shallow uh, water port. Uh, can we go back, please? One slide. Yeah, thank you. So if you can see the inbound containers have been increasing since 2017, and it's basically, we, it's been growing with our colleagues in Abu Dhabi Port. So we started 2000, 2017 with 128,000 uh, ton of material, and now we are at close to 162,000. We have intentionally removed 2020 because 2020 is a very unique year, and I don't, we don't think that this captures the sentiments of the market. When it comes to the outbound, you can see an increase in our business with our colleagues in Abu Dhabi ports. We started a little bit uh, with difficulties, but I think today both parties are very confident. We can basically uh, export steel from Abu Dhabi, and I think Abu Dhabi is one of the uh, biggest, uh, I would say, destinations to export steel within the GCC. As you see in 2020, 422,000 of steel has been exported to over 40 countries from Abu Dhabi. 
What also we have done, which is interesting, it was challenging in the beginning. We have also started to diversify uh, exporting from bulk to uh, containers. Today, we are basically also exporting our uh, business in containers. And as you can see, there has been a huge jump in, uh, in containers export. And uh, this shows how close we are working with our colleagues in uh, Amadali Ports. Next, please. That's it. I was going to leave you with this uh, with this slide, which where it shows uh, the cer signing ceremony of this interesting project. Thank you so much. This is the end of my presentation, and I wish you all a, a, a very interesting webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Saeed, for being here with us. Uh, you'll, you'll hopefully stay with us for the Q and A section. We're uh, we're delighted to have you with us, and uh, we we uh, we look forward to continuing uh, the journey together in this uh, industrialization drive of the UAE. Um, we're, we're moving on. It's my pleasure now to uh, to introduce somebody from uh, from uh, ADQ. Uh, Ahmed Al Hamali is a senior associate at ADQ. He's part of the portfolio management team covering the very important utilities and energy sector, whilst advancing inv investment opportunities for the company ADQ in that space. Good afternoon and welcome, Ahmed. Good afternoon, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, I just want to it's, shed some light on uh, His Excellency's comment on the importance of the uh, hydrogen in the uh, port uh, strategy. Uh, I'll first begin off with a uh, slightly uh, chemistry class, uh, Paul, here in 101. Just want to take you back and, and say that the uh, hydrogen sits, and where, where does it sit in the uh, periodic table? So it sits number one in the periodic table. And as we speak right now, the hydrogen is the most uh, abundant chemical substance in the universe. And what we see currently right now when the world sees it is the uh, hydrogen is the most valuable, uh, valuable. Uh, it's, it's, it's valued differently globally. So uh, I'll take you. I'll take you as well on the current supply and demand of hydrogen, and I'll take you as well on the uh, on the future demand and its application and Abu Dhabi's capability and as well uh, ADQ's contribution to this mix. So uh, over 99% of the hydrogen produced uh, today is used uh, using fossil fuel. Which one of the common ways of uh, common method of you of uh, of uh, producing is uh, steam, uh, steam methane reforming SMR. So uh, hydrogen use uh, hydrogen use today is down to used by industries, namely oil oil refineries, ammonia production, methanol uh, production, and steel production, as my uh, colleague uh, colleague from MRC just referred here. Uh, most of the hydrogen as well supplied currently uh, uses fossil fuels. So basically what we see here is a significant potential for emission reduction uh, towards a much, clear, a much cleaner hydrogen uh, production. So uh, in future as well, uh, we see that hydrogen uh, is becoming uh, an established uh, feedstock with exponential uh, growth primarily driven uh, by the energy transition policies and companies' commitment towards clean hydrogen. Uh, while today uh, hydrogen is primarily used in industrial sector, it, uh, it can have multiple applications across sectors over time. New applications uh, may include power generation, uh, potentially as a combustion component and, and for turbines, storage, energy transmission, and transportation, we can see passenger cars in the near future. We can see public buses, railways, and marine news. The industries we can see use in, in iron, steel, ammonia, and other chemicals. And we can see a hydrogen use as well in local power and heat generation as well. With the new applications, uh, clean hydrogen has a potential significant reduction in the uh, CO2 emission. Over the long term, uh, it could be more than 15% of the total energy mix. With that being said, a global expectation and uh, demand is expected to grow from the current levels up to eight times from the current levels as compared to today's uh, market. I'll shift you uh, towards the Abu Dhabi capabilities and how it positions itself in hydrogen. Uh, Abu, Dhabi has a, has a, Abu Dhabi has a great opportunity and potential potentially to deepen the hydrogen uh, energy economy, allowing it to meet the rapidly growing uh, global demand for clean hydrogen worldwide as we speak. Just a quick, uh, quick one on, on, on our current activity. ADNOC, uh, ADQ, and Mobile Investment Com uh, Company, 
uh, with their large portfolio companies have collaborated together and formed an alliance earlier this year, as you may be aware of. Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance is as well uni uniquely positioned to align in a single roadmap to assess and develop a domestic hydrogen market and as well to cater for the global uh, growing demand of hydrogen. I'm going to explain to you in a bit how ADQ fits in the Abu Dhabi hydro hydrogen ecosystem. With Abu Dhabi's uh, largest portfolio of energy and utility assets, ADQ uh, play an important role in Abu Dhabi, uh, Abu Dhabi transition towards cleaner energy while shaping the future of hydrogen cluster, leading to Abu Dhabi's long-term sustainable goal in emission reduction. We offer different, uh, tech, uh, different generation technologies in ADQ's portfolio uh, level uh, with Taga and Enic. Uh, and uh, conventional, uh, in a conventional way, we produce 16 gigawatts of power, and we have a 2.5 uh, gigawatts of power, and we plan to increase that. In nuclear, we do have a 5.6 gigawatts of power by 2024. So basically, this energy mix puts ADQ in a driving seat uh, towards the energy transition. Uh, additionally, ADQ uh, continues to play uh, a, and develop uh, other key uh, cluster in the hydrogen uh, ecosystem, including mobility, logistic, ADQs as well, well placed to drive the local uh, hydrogen adoption in sectors with high energy demand. ADQ as well will bring together its portfolio companies such as Abu Dhabi Ports, Abu Dhabi Airports, Etihad Rail, Emirates Steel, to enable the activities undertaken by the uh, hydrogen strategy. As part as well of ADQ's strategic goal to support Abu Dhabi's vision to reduce carbon emission, we are innovating and driving different initiatives from our portfolio companies today. In conclusion, I would, li I would like to as well add uh, that the UAE has a, a great potential to build a local hydrogen economy and become a leading clean energy exporter of hydrogen in terms of either hydrogen as a, on a standalone basis or an end-use uh, end product. However, uh, significant commercial technologies and infrastructure-related challenges uh, remain for the hydrogen economy to, be, uh, to become a mainstream. We can see this improvement coming in over time as well. With, uh, with the Abu Dhabi Hydrogen Alliance as well, I just want to include this, that our aim is to uh, actively engage with different stakeholders to identify a roadmap to success and synchronize investment development across the value chain, so hydrogen can play its role in Abu Dhabi and the UAE, specifically in the energy transition process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ahmed, for a very insightful presentation on, on one of the hottest topics at the moment in, uh, in the industrialization uh, uh, landscape. Um, we, had a, we had a large audience today that specifically joined to learn more about Abu Dhabi's uh, hydrogen plant. So thank you very much for being with us here today, and we look forward to speaking a little further with you in uh, in the Q and A. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce our last speaker, um, Khalifa Youssef Almeri, the acting CEO of Taziz, who was appointed in November 2020. He has spent most of his career at the heart of Abu Dhabi's chemical industry, beginning with more than eight years at Borouche, Abnox Chemicals joint venture with Borealis. He built a lot of expertise in chemical production um, and, and the overall uh, sector. Good afternoon, Khalifa, and thanks for being here with us today. Good afternoon, Paul, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, uh, it's I, I it's an like honor to... and a pleasure, and, and talking about hot topics, definitely the Taziz uh, uh, landscape is, is, is a very hot topic uh, for both our ports as well as our overall stakeholders. But can you give us a little bit of insight into Taziz and your investment plans and how they contribute to, uh, to the growth of the UAE? Sure. Allow me, uh, Paul, to introduce uh, Taziz. So what is Taziz? It's a joint venture between ADNOC and ADQ established in November last year. So ADNOC with its world scale downstream assets and competitive hydrocarbon position and close to five decades of best-in-class operational experience. ADQ with its uh, critical industry-enabling infrastructure and related services, and owning Abu Dhabi's largest power, water, and, and utility portfolio. Together, they created the joint venture, Taziz, as a petrochemical holding company to 
to drive technology in all to drive technology in all of its investment to be the south after partner for both local and international investors and to be a catalyst for the industrial growth uh, in Abu Dhabi and economic development. Next slide, please. So we've announced back in November our initial Ta'ziz located right next to uh, to the waste downstream assets that enables uh, that enables that enables Ta'ziz to with that includes the industrial chemical zone and a light industrial zone that we will touch upon as well. Next slide, please. We've announced back in November Ta'ziz's initial growth plan, which includes an ammonia plant, chloralkali with EDC. A methanol plant, an IPO, IPA as shown in the next slide. Elastomers and Malikan hydride. All of these chemicals will be produced for the very first time in UAE. And will enable many industries to further develop within UAE. In addition to that, we've developed as well a light industrial zone and a service industrial zone to cater for the Ruiz industrial area localized demand. Next slide, please. So what are our key differentiators? So being right next to the world scale uh, assets, downstream assets and Ruiz, uh, we do have reliable and competitive feedstock available. There, we do have a capex efficiency with the plug and play model where the chemical investments will focus only on on the chemicals and we as adnoc recently announced uh, a project framework agreement signed with paqa that will enable the utilities to be at a competitive price within the ta'ziz ecosystem specifically within the chemical industrial zone as well a, a low carbon a carbon efficient industrial park with the attractive policies, ICV enabler, and the proximity to the industrial industrial area of Ruiz. So we've touched upon our growth plan, uh, our key differentiators, and these with these key differentiators, we will be seeking partnerships with uh, international partners and local partners that will bring in marketing and offtake capability, o &M capability, access to technology, financial strength, and ICV to support the economic development, industrial economic development in UAE. Next slide, please. With the six projects that uh, I've discussed earlier, most of which will be produced for the very first time with a total capex of 5.5 billion US dollars. Uh, we finalized our study, our, our feasibility study back in November. We expect a final investment decision in mid 2022, while the plants will be operational by 2025. I think with this, uh, in a nutshell, I, I've given a brief of Ta'ziz. Any Thank you very much, Khalifa. Uh, that was extremely insightful. Um, could you elaborate a little bit on the markets that Ta'ziz will be targeting and what logistical requirements are, there are to uh, to enable that uh, that goal of reaching those markets? Given UAE's proximity uh, call to growth markets, logistics will play a vital role in us catering for the customer demands in those markets, in Asia specifically. Uh, enable us to reach our customers as efficient as possible, as low cost as possible, and will enable a low working capital for both the customer and the producer. So, so all in all, uh, we do believe UAE is well positioned and logistics plays a vital role in that. Thank you very much, uh, Khalifa, and, um, uh, for, for, for sharing your updates about a very exciting product, uh, project. It's been a great exchange of information today. We started with His Excellency giving us an update on uh, what the UAE is doing to attract and to diversify the economy. 
Safe then took us to the broader strategy of, of Abu Dhabi ports and his team uh, zoomed in on Fujara and Khalifa port and the Al Dakhra re region. We then got some of the subsectors that, uh, that uh, His Excellency pulled out, uh, steel, hydrogen and, and chemicals. Uh, um, and we got, we got some very interesting updates about that. I'd now like to move into the Q&A session. Uh, we have some uh, questions that have come in. Uh, and maybe um, I'd like to start with uh, Ahmed from ADQ. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on the hydrogen plants and how they support the climate commitments? Sure. Uh, just to uh, put things in, uh, in, 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 in perspective, so hydrogen is a, is, it can be used as a combustion component without even uh, extracting the uh, carbon out of it. So this mainly can be used as we speak uh, instead of uh, um, instead of firing up natural gas into 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 a turbine to to generate electricity can be it can be used in in, in that uh, particular manner. But this is a promising technology, promising uh, promising as well uh, product. We'll wait and we'll, we 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 will see all the technologies uh, hopefully quite soon. This space. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ahmed. Um, uh, Said, maybe then a question for you because steel was also called out as a potential uh, demand center for for uh, for hydrogen. Uh, what what is ESI doing on um, on greener plans for the future? So, uh, uh, th thank you again, Paul. So, what we're doing is we have uh, two years ago we started a very interesting transformation program, which includes a five years uh, strategy around where to position Emirates Steel. The, the decarbonization has been a critical component there. And it is actually, uh, if you look at today, the, the, global, uh, the global direction uh, today, they are basically factoring in mind decarbonization for if you want to sell into those regions. So this becomes a very important uh, element uh, for us. And a very interesting project we're doing today. We are uh, we are basically today uh, we have we have a plant with our uh, with with Adnok in Abu Dhabi that captures carbon, and then that carbon is injected into oil fields uh, for for them to basically replace it uh, by injecting the the natural gas. So Emirates Steel's uh, initiatives for uh, for, the, for the for 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 decarbonization is is very. Is, is there in our strategy, and this is something that we are focusing on. Thank you very much, Said. That's very encouraging uh, for the future generations uh, as well, uh, and for ADQ, of course. Um, question from the audience for Khalifa from uh, Taziz. Um, uh, you, uh, you have the largest talked about petrochemical project in the Middle East. You touched a little bit on ICV. We have a very large local uh, uh, representation here uh, in our audience. Can you elaborate a little bit on the role of ICV in um, in, in the Taziz project? Taziz will be producing the six chemicals that I talked about earlier, and uh, most of these chemicals will be produced for the very first time in Abu Dhabi. Uh, with that, with that being said, that will enable and will support an import substitution that will enable the ICV of many of the industries locally to uh, to increase and uh, and therefore retain within the local economy the value. Thank you, Khalifa. That's that's very encouraging for our uh, local uh, participants. Um, question mm. for uh, Mr. Saif Al Masrou uh, What are some of the ways that Abu Dhabi Ports is linking the port portfolio? with other elements of the wider Abu Dhabi Ports Group to deliver a fully integrated and complete solutions for clients and investors? Well, for this question, I think it is really important for our investors and the people dealing with us to understand this point. Um, part of our realized vision lies in supporting uh, um, the oil and gas sector um, with access and infrastructure and services, manufacturing, utilities, and number of solutions to provide a full uh, chain requirement um, and distribute the products to both local and international market. 
um, a prime example that we have uh, today is the, the manufacture grow of uh, the business of our uh, the Emirates Global uh, Aluminium. Um, uh, today, uh, EGA, uh, the abbreviation of it, is uh, uh, located in a Tawila facility in Kizad and enjoy, uh, and enjoy a host of benefits thanks to both uh, presence of the uh, of the zone as well as proximity to Khalifa port, our uh, flagship deep water. Uh, also, um, also uh, in addition to that, uh, the, the, uh, it has a, a terminal in Guinea port that which we uh, also manage and uh, a container freight station that we have in Khalifa port. So this combination of activities that is uh, under the umbrella and the services that we are providing. Uh, to mention also the the the, the, the capability that we um, uh, added to to cope with the requirements of uh, of, of receiving cape size vessel in Khalifa port, um, that goes also to our partnership uh, in the oil and gas uh, sector and providing dedicated uh, logistics space for multi engineering uh, procurement construction companies uh, that we are dealing with. Um, and that also going by uh, by offering dedicated logistics space that allow them to sig uh, significantly improve efficiencies, reduce costs, and number of time uh, time of cargo could handled uh, in, the, in the total supply uh, chain. Uh, there are uh, I can go uh, more and more on that one, but I mean that in in a very nutshell in the key things how we uh, link uh, and I'm using an example of some of our existing customer uh, today. Thank you very much, uh, Saif. Uh, question from the audience for uh, for Kim Larson. Could you highlight some of uh, specific customer success stories that demonstrate the competitive offering um, for prospective clients that have come to Abu Dhabi? Yes, no, no, absolutely. I, I think it actually was a good example that uh, Saif Al Masroi just mentioned because you can say EGA is a, it's really a fundamental uh, part of that where you can say we provide the full uh, supply chain logistics. Beyond that, uh, then we uh, then we actually have a, a client, uh, Barouche, which you also has mentioned a little bit before. But it's just to, to mention two different types of, uh, let's say, clients that we have been able to expand the logistics offering, uh, and, and that will only go further and further, right? Because with it, with Etihad Rail also expanding inside the port boundary, all of a sudden you're offering a lot more multimodal. So for Barouche, as an example, you can say by coming into Khalifa Port having uh, access to two uh, hypermodern uh, container terminals, access to a network uh, to the world in terms of export uh, and import opportunities, of course, but mainly exports, storage facilities, warehousing facilities, where we can do distribution, packaging, but also where we can distribute within the UAE. And, and that could actually be a facilitator for many in the same industry, right? And if you look through the many industries we wanna support, that is also finding their home in the industrial zones behind the port, this is absolutely key, right? So we are talking within the metals group, we're talking in the food sector, we talk chemicals and plastics, like here we in, in the Peru segments, we'll, we'll be in the pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals, we'll be in construction and uh, packaging and everything else. So all of them will have uh, a number of value chains. And I think, you know, as we go by, this value chain will be expanded more and more and more. And you can say we already have a fully integrated, uh, let's say multimodal logistics package ready for, for a lot of these common, uh, let's say customers to come in. Some of them could even be, you know, first movers, and uh, and this is definitely an attractive proposition, especially in the way we're going right now. So, so that's why we welcome everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Kim. It, it sounds like you are uh, gearing up and getting ready to cater any investor that wants to come to uh, to Abu Dhabi. Right, everyone. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I want to take this opportunity again on behalf of the overall Abu Dhabi Ports leadership team to thank His Excellency Jamal Al Jarwan. Uh, engineer Said Kalfal Al Ghafri, Galifa Youssef Al Mahri, and Ahmed Al Mahali for joining us today and being part of a very interesting discussion. Thank you also to my colleagues, Saif, Abdulaziz, Mubarak, and Kim for their presentations and very insightful uh, updates. Please make sure you follow us on um, on all of our social media. You can also watch this uh, this uh, webinar back on uh, YouTube and share it with your colleagues and stakeholders and partners. Um, any further inquiries you have, feel free to reach out. We are here to help you. Unfortunately, we've not been able to, uh, to answer all the questions that the audience has brought up, but we will make sure we lock them and we reach out to you. 
Thank you, everybody. We look forward to welcoming you at any future Abu Dhabi Ports event, and we wish you a wonderful rest of the day.